All right, this will be the last of the 40 minute series here that's gotten you a big to a big squiggly shape for all you know. Let's review what layer things are on. If we click, remember it's hard to grab things when the grid and the snap are on, so we're hitting F7 and F9. We've got something there, right click, properties, that is on layer zero. That would be the layer you want to put most of the things if you're doing a base block drawing, where you're going to be using blocks, you put things on layer zero unless you have uh, another reason to do layering and coloring and all kinds of different things. And we also have, if we look within here, I just did a, a window by going left to right. Everything inside was highlighted. I hit right click, properties, and there's better ways to do that. That is on block points. And if you remember also, we also want to have around the idea of the block hide. You would like that to have that block hide layer on as well. And that's really throwing me, but I'm going to say minus layer on block dash hide as we look at that interface. Minus layer thaw block dash hide. And there again is our overall outside lines. Now these all are layer are most of them are in white. Uh, the block points is actually in blue. The, you'll learn that the color of the layer that you'd make things in in the short term is very unimportant. It's just that you want to make sure that your things do not have color. If you notice here, the color of the line is by layer. So you control colors by the layer. And if you, we haven't gone through that yet, just stick with that rule for the most part and try to have then every layer be a different color. In this class, we'll be drafting off of some pretty standard layers but as you are working on your own stuff or trying to work on things for other classes I don't know an electrical schematic realize that thinking about the layering and the coloring scheme is going to make it so you can collaborate nicely all right we now have a set of things that we have that we're going to call our repeating shape one of the key things you'll hear over and over again is anytime you see a repeating shape, think block, think block, think block. In AutoCAD, that repeating shape concept is called a block. In SketchUp, it's called a component. In MicroStation, it is called a cell. In ClipArt, I don't know, it's called a ClipArt. But repeating shapes are symbols very often that you're going to be using over and over again and they're very often standard. What we're going to do here now is we're going to show you how to take this kind of disaggregated set of things and make it into the block. We're going to do that and put this block inside just this drawing. Though you will see if you are making a really cool block what you should start to do is say that's a really cool block and organize sticking it out and organizing it in some way in your your drive uh, in your home drive that way you can build a set of tools that you have some ownership of and that you can control and nuance on the other side of that most of the time when you're getting to do production level drafting the blocks are provided to you in an interface that we'll see in class or some other interface there are about a million gazillion or maybe just a billion blocks out on the web and you can be pretty much assured that if you want to draft a block it's already been drafted at some standard I would say however they're not all done that well uh, because of, they're not done that well because they haven't used this kind of layering scheme. So you can also bring in other blocks and adjust them and layer them and do the things that we just talked about in these last couple of videos. All right, well, just like I showed you minus layer, and I'll, we'll learn the regular layer command. Uh, I'm gonna show you the block command in with the minus in front of it and we'll see later why as we compare things like array and minus array <clears throat> or layer and minus layer 
minus block makes things a little easier for making it. What you're going to do is it's going to ask you for a name and then an insertion point. And this is where essentially when you're bringing your block in, it's what you're going to grab and move it around with. So I'm going to use in this case the bottom center for my insertion point. The smack dab middle might be not a bad one either. But as you make these blocks, you really want to think about what is going to be the single one spot that is going to be the most important to drag this thing around to, to the grid or whatever. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type minus B or minus block, depending on which computer you're on. Almost always you can learn to type out the long command because the AutoCAD will then understand it. Minus block. You see enter block name or question mark. If I type in a question mark here, it will give me the list of blocks that are in the drawing. But I am going to put in attack front end load of my blocks so I can arrange them. This might be electrical dash. This might be whatever. Patak dash August 30 dash. I'm sorry. Let me go with an underscore here to get you in that habit. Patak underscore August 30 underscore scheme All right and what you'll see very often because you won't be typing these things you'll be pulling them off a list you do want to be relatively expressive about them that is the block name it's asking me for the insertion base point that is that point that you're going to want to follow this to follow around I'm going to tell it the midpoint of that you remember the midpoint and the node of the little point there are the same so it really makes no difference what I'd pick as long as I grab something there. And then I'm going to grab all my objects. I've made the block. It's not on the drafting space, it is in the drawing. And so the final piece we have to now remember is that though we make blocks on layer 0, when we bring them in, we bring them into a the layer we want to put the block and it will then be the universal chameleon and you'll see that here as I set my current layer double click on object and now use the insert command now there it is and we'll use the we'll tend to use the um, ribbon here but again insert is one of those huge commands that it's worth using uh, the key ins I N I N for insert and you'll get a, hopefully get something coming up here. Ah, uh, intersect, sorry. How about I spacebar? <clears throat> there it is, there's the insert. Since it's inside the drawing, you can pull it down from here. If it was outside the drawing, you do a browse. You see a lot of these things. Specify on screen, scale, we're gonna leave scale to be one. We're not gonna change these or nor the rotation to start. Hit okay. And you notice as I bring it in, it's following along that insertion point. Now, I can bring in another one. This time I'm going to go ahead and type minus I N for insert, or minus I, or just minus insert. It remember the last block name, so I don't have to, I can just hit a, a return or a spacebar. Insertion point, if you remember there are little points inside that block so instead of I can go shift right click and go to node and it will grab that node and I can change the scale or do whatever I want one 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 and there you have it now you might say but I didn't want to have these boxes out on the sides it might throw you when you're starting and you don't have to have them showing up you can instead now just freeze or freeze that layer. I'm going to do that now until I relook at the layer command, the layer toolbar, and I'm going to do that. I guess I might as well go ahead and take this out here, show you this is the layer toolbar. That becomes this click on and off layer control. I can go to here. I can go to on and off, all kinds of layer stuff or I can go here and go to the block hide and turn it off. Again go to here, I can go to the block hide. I'm sorry, I'm not turning it off, I'm actually freezing it and thawing it. They're very similar, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now and you see it there, or I can go back here 
and turn it on. I even could go, if you remember how we laid this all out, <clears throat> I even could then now go and turn off layer 0. Sorry, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to turn off freeze layer 0. And it doesn't actually let me, so I'm kind of curious why not. But we can realize we'll have a lot of control. That didn't work that well. I'll cover that in another video. We'll have a lot of control over what occurs in our blocks. 